Shaolin, in the heart of China, is the cradle of Zen Buddhism. It is also the monastery where Kung Fu began. Emperor Xiu Yin of the Wei dynasty built this temple 15 centuries ago to welcome the first monks arriving in China from India to teach Buddhism. Since he was 11, Xie De Yang has dedicated his life to Zen Buddhism, or Chan in Chinese. For De Yang, life is only a stage between birth and death. As a consequence of acts performed during his time on earth, he will be reborn either as a man or as an animal. Buddha found a way to break the endless cycle of birth, death and rebirth, which has continued since time began. He achieved enlightenment and at last experienced absence of pain, beatitude in destruction, nirvana. Shirda Yang is following this path. He wants to reach enlightenment which in time will permit him to become Buddha, to become pure spirit. The monks follow the teachings of Buddha in the sutras. The legend explains that these scriptures brought from India by a monk were swallowed by a fish during the journey, so the chants are accompanied by the rhythm of the muyu, an instrument shaped like a fish. The Indian monk Bodhidharma reached Chaolin in the year 527. He caught the imagination of the Chinese by spending nine years meditating, facing the wall of a cave. His shadow imprinted itself in this rock, reverently preserved in the temple. He brought Zen Buddhism to Shaolin. The Zen school teaches its disciples the techniques of meditation and introspection to prepare them for enlightenment, which everyone can experience. It can happen like a burst of light. Zen awakens spiritual wisdom through mastery of the body, honed by long periods of meditation. Kung Fu evolved from exercises used to reawaken the body from its dormant state. Zen makes the body soft as silk, as light as a feather, as supple as forged steel. Shaolin combines the Indian techniques of yoga with Chinese Taoist exercises. These movements produce suppleness and good health by harmonizing the breath and the flow of energy in the body. Taoism lends fluidity and economy to the body's movements, allowing the monks to remain physically active to an advanced age.
Exercises are always followed by long periods of meditation in the outdoors. By making contact with the earth, man draws energy in its purest form, the chi, which gives him the strength to pass from meditation to action. Susi is the temple elder and the oldest master. He continues to pass on his teachings. His life work is a collection of sacred Shaolin texts. The old manuscript had to be rewritten after its destruction in 1928 during a fire caused by local warlords. Kurse 这样，是吧？这不问，就叫王地狗。这叫地狗。嗯，这叫王地狗，退了房病。退房病。嗯，身上的，身上的，嗯，各部长有点打，在学习，在学习。在学习。嗯。嗯。The Indian sage Bodhidharma is regarded as the first Shaolin master. To this day, his teachings are passed on from master to pupil. Susi, the elder, represents the 30th generation of masters. He survived the Cultural Revolution and re-established Shaolin monks and their traditions. <laughs> Chujayan 
是否和土地之间的这个亲密感情？教主，释迦牟尼流传法迹。Buddha believes that humans and animals have the same origins. A human can be the reincarnation of an animal and vice versa. From this belief come the Shaolin fighting styles that mimic animals. These styles are based on religious introspection and the observation of animals themselves. The eagle technique mimics an eagle swooping on his prey. To scare an opponent, you must use the style of the serpent. This technique exploits the opponent's weak points by making treacherous attacks. In every foreseeable situation, the fighting monk should use an animal fighting style when attacking and mimic its postures and defensive tactics to ward off an opponent's attack. These fighting styles are described in the monk's manuscripts, just like the teaching of Buddha. The defensive and offensive positions of the monkey style are meant to surprise and disorient an enemy. Shaolin was once surrounded by forests and monks could observe the wild animals in their own environment. Shaolin's isolated mountain location made it the perfect target for looters and invaders. At first, the monks had only their bare hands and heavy prayer beads to defend themselves. Shaolin is strategically situated on the slopes of Mount Shoshen, dominating the fertile plains of the Yellow River. In neighboring villages, physical training is a regular part of country life. This is the origin of Tai Chi, which prepares an entire population for combat. For centuries, Shaolin was at the center of all China's civil wars. Because of its religious tolerance, it became a haven for defeated soldiers and banished officers. These refugees taught their military skill to the monks in exchange for knowledge of martial arts. For some disciples, Shaolin was simply a traditional military organization. For others, it was a secret society. Discipline enabled these men to survive all the wars. <laughs> During the Cultural Revolution, 
Shaolin was forgotten and its masters scattered. Today, 60 monks are ready to make any sacrifice to protect their temple. In the 7th century, Shaolin masters saved the Chinese emperor. The temple walls tell the story. In Shaolin, 13 monks trained in great secrecy to save Li Shamin, emperor of the Tang dynasty. On these flagstones, worn from centuries of use, their distant descendants repeat the same movements. They come to absorb the spirituality of this place. At Shaolin, two extremes coexist. Meditation as calm as water and violent action like raging fire. Wind, rain or snow, the monks rise at four in the morning. The day always begins the same way, with meditation. At daybreak, monks gather in the forest of the pagodas, where all the masters since the founding of the temple are buried. The first exercises warm up and awaken the body to give it sensitivity and suppleness before the action begins. <laughs> To know the secrets of the monastery, we must share the monks' daily routine. By their own admission, their secret lies in three rules. Rise early, go to bed late, work and more work. Kung Fu draws its power from the Qi, the inner energy. Qigong is the training method that draws on this energy to forge a hard shell against pain. Qigong frees them from pain inflicted by the adversary, leaving the mind clear to think and thus to win. Meditation under great difficulty trains the fighter to transcend pain and prepare his next move. Yeah. <laughs> 
According to the ancients, Qigong breathing exercises not only encased the vital organs in a type of armor, but rendered them impervious to wounds. Before the invention of firearms, these men were invincible. Zen Buddhism blends action and meditation. It can be spontaneous and also deliberately provocative. This suits the down-to-earth Chinese temperament. In a secret place, in the only part of the original monastery still standing, Xie Dayang receives training from Su Yun. His skills are unique, as he is the only master of the 30th generation still capable of physical activity. Even at the age of 82, he rises at two in the morning to maintain his suppleness and to meditate. Zen is performed without elaborate trappings or a place of worship. It needs only direct intuition arising from meditation. Zen has transformed the original Indian Buddhism into a ritual adapted to the practical Chinese sensibility. 
Every follower must aim at forgetting the constraints of the physical world to achieve enlightenment. Jujuka That is why physical training continues during meals. The horseman position recalls the time when early masters fought on horseback to maintain order in the empire. It's a position to test the novice's endurance. In the same spirit, the rule is to pay homage to the master by serving him from the Shaolin teapot. It weighs 50 kilos, empty. The teachings and the temple journal are written in calligraphy. The calligrapher is the only master to come in from outside. Within the monastery, there are only two arts, meditation and combat. One of the fundamentals of Zen is the art of provocation in words or gesture to transcend oneself and confront others, like the feats of this novice. The Kung Fu chants also help to absorb the spirit of Shaolin. The Spartan life of the fighting monks demands rigorous and advanced training. At about 10, children have their heads shaved, a sign of their lifetime commitment. Most of the novices come from poor rural backgrounds, some from the monks' own families. Intensive training to harden the body precedes religious instruction.
The young novices quickly learn to fight in the monkey style. In order to control their bodies, the monks withdraw to a private place to harden themselves against pain, the iron shirt. This protection is earned only by fierce effort. The will becomes central because the purpose of Zen is to allow anyone direct, intuitive understanding of his true nature. of martial arts refer to intense Shaolin Qigong, a technique of self-transcendence. It requires several years of training, a minimum of three to four hours per day. At that rate, the head can become an anvil and the arms hammers. The monks train as they did in the Middle Ages, either out in nature or in the monastery. Exercises like hanging require three years of effort. This mixture of perseverance and provocativeness gives Shaolin martial arts its unique aspect, both troubling and spectacular. When it was established, the monastery was a haven for the first Buddhists and for a throng of persecuted peasants. It became a meeting place for everyone seeking truth or refuge. In the 8th century, monks selected a reforming master, Huang Nung. Once an illiterate butcher's assistant, he entered the order after hearing a sutra recited by a monk. He finally became the sixth Zen patriarch. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Following the rescue of Emperor Li Xiamin, an army was established in the monastery. The monks became experts in knife fighting and in other more secret, highly efficient methods. The best known is the nunchaka, which was developed from the peasant's flail. <laughs> These fighting techniques and weapons have inspired a new film genre. Da Yang visits the Shaolin villages. He is careful to answer their questions, especially those regarding the differences between his monastery and others. Efficiency of this fighting style made highway robbers fear the monks' drunkenness. In fact, Shaolin monks drink very little alcohol. Even during rest periods, monks force themselves into difficult positions. At Shaolin, traditional medical practices can quickly put sick or wounded monks back on their feet. Their effectiveness comes from a profound knowledge of plants. Master Detienne has devoted his life to these remedies. Then 
用这个，用它，哎，用这个，啊、嗯，用这个壶啊，嗯，炒半熟，炒半熟，炒一炒啊，这个一喝，这个脑子就清晰了。嗯以后，哎，脑子就不再清晰了，就不再混了，就不再混了，就可以清晰了、哎就是。另外就是说，嗯、心跳，嗯，心慌，将、嗯、这个一吃，心里就。这个药呢，主要是用这个浅草，特别是根儿啊。浅草。要用的时间，把它这样挖开，哎，这样挖开。哦。哎，这样挖开。它这个根儿能起什么作用？哎，哎，在这个根儿了。啊。把它个。洗干净以后，就是、然后用刀、就是、哎把这个都给它去掉，哎、啊，哎，然后把它洗干净以后，那个刀啊，把切片啊，切成片以后，比如说晚上喝，明天就好；上午喝，下午中就消了。哎呀，有那么大的身体效果、哎？这是喝，另外呢还可以把它将这个药水可以洗，嗯，药水来洗一洗。啊，还可以把它碾成面。那你说它有这么好的效果，这个那我得放着，我得拿、哎、好好好拿回去啊，放着将来留着用。哎，这得禅法师给我禅的一个秘方。好好，那我这得放着将来有用的话，好用。哎、啊、，The remedies are secret; they are only passed on from master to pupil. Accidents occur frequently during training. There are special prescriptions. Which outsiders find incomprehensible. <音>行了，好了，起来走走试试看看。Reaching the pinnacle of their art, some monks may decide to leave the monastery to teach on the outside. They must pass through the mountain door. These departures are rare, as the monastery is not anxious to spread its knowledge. This ritual is a recreation of a tradition that existed during the temple's days of glory. Hey! <laughs> 
。如果明天有一场战争的话，你是不是会参加这场战争去，比方说杀人呢、啊？现在这个战争不需要我去参加战斗了，我需要的是天下太平。Today, Shaolin is on the pilgrim's trail for all martial arts masters, religious or not. They come in search of the Shaolin spirit, like this old Kung Fu master. About 20 martial arts schools with secular masters have become established around the monastery. They train 20,000 youths a year in Kung Fu Ushu, which includes traditional unarmed fighting styles and knife fighting. Xie De Yang himself trains the children of his village. For today, Secular masters of the Kung Fu Training Center in Shaolin are dressed like monks. They've taken over from the monks and organized classes and demonstrations. This is a lucrative exploitation of the Shaolin myth by the Chinese administration. After the dark years of the Cultural Revolution, the Chinese authorities have finally acknowledged that Shaolin is part of Chinese history. This year, all the monks have assembled in this stadium for a solemn celebration of the 15 centuries of the tradition of Shaolin.